DaVinci Resolve 20 introduced a lot of new AI features, but I found two audio features that were helpful. So welcome back to Creator Reality. Today, my friend, we're taking a look at some of the audio features that DaVinci Resolve 20 added. So let's dive into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here we have a recent project I was working on where I've got a bunch of clips here that are all three seconds long. And if I select them all and press Control D, it'll show you the length is three seconds for each one. And I want to show all of these clips in succession, a montage, if you will, but I want to cut to the beat. And cutting to the beat, if you're not aware, is just having a beat in the music and a scene change at the same time. It kind of keeps things flowing, keeps up the pace, can drive up viewer engagement, so I like to do it, and I don't need 10 seconds of each clip. Anyway, let me show you what we're doing with it. I've got all my three second clips lined up and I dragged in a track from the YouTube audio library and I want to cut to the beat. Well, I can see there's a beat here and a beat there and a beat there. And obviously I have snapping turned on. So it's this icon or the N key. So when I click around here, it was going right to there. If I turn it back on, you'll see what I mean. I go to try to click around here and it's going to snap to this scene change right here. But we'll go ahead and turn that back off. And so I've got a beat there and a beat here and a beat there and then faster there. These clips obviously don't line up with that. So I'm going to turn snapping back on. And all I have to do is click on my audio track, right click and say show music beats. Well, I guess I have to click on it. And then look at that. DaVinci Resolve added in where all the beats are. If I alt mouse wheel to zoom in, you can see that there's a lot of beats going on, right? Look at this. There's a whole bunch of them. It's pretty fast paced. Let's take a listen. Okay, so that might not be where we want to start. Maybe we want to start up here somewhere and then it's going to analyze to detect the beats again. And then we're going to bring it back and let's start here. We've got a beat that starts one frame over. Okay, and then it's one frame off of there and there. Well, with our music track selected, we can come up and click this icon for the trim edit mode. And then that gives us these funny icons and we can grab this one when it goes to the two bars there and drag over two frames. Now we're already lined up with the beat there and there and there. So each of these three second clips seems to line up. How nifty is that? So let's play it back now. Okay. So now we figured out that we have all the beats lined up, but we don't like those specific beats. So let's go back into trim edit mode and we'll bring this big beat to the start of our first clip. So we'll make sure we have the right icon and we'll grab that and drag it right over. And if you see this icon, it's going to drag the clip back and forth. And this one will do the same thing as the other one that we did, control Z to undo. So we'll go back into normal edit mode. Let's listen. So I really want this clip right here. I want this beat. So I can just go drag my mouse cursor to that beat and drag our next clip over. So we know there's a, a beat in here. So we'll line our mouse cursor up and just drag our clip over. Remember we have snapping turned on, which is pretty cool. So now when we listen to this one, Well, that's going to be too long. We don't want to go all the way there. Did you hear that symbol? That's this beat right here. So we'll drag our next clip over and then I'll speed up through the rest of these and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about as far as the cutting to the beat. And one thing you'll notice is that if I drag these clips over, you'll see that with snapping turned on, as I get closer, yes, it's going to snap there, but then it's going to snap to the next beat and then the next beat after that until we get to the one where we want to actually drop our clip. And now with that done, control B backspace to get rid of the excess and we can right click and unshow the music beats so that DaVinci Resolve doesn't go back and try to reanalyze it if we move things around. Pretty cool, right? Now, 
if we look at this in uh, in the timeline, we've got several clips that are long and then a bunch of short ones. So if I play this back for you. That's pretty cool, right? There's one more thing that we can do. If you have studio, then you have the film look creator. So I've added it to an adjustment clip and I can layer that on top, trim to the length, and then it changes the look. It kind of gives it a film grain look. If we go full screen, you can see the grain up here and it's changed the color, giving it just a little extra secret sauce, a little spice. It, it looks different. It looks a little bit more cinematic. Now this next feature might actually be even more useful than the first. Here in this section of the video, I've got off bike, on bike, and off bike. There's a lot going on, but I want one solid music track running under the whole thing. As you can tell, this music track ends before this section of video does. And in the old days, you know, back when wagon wheels had to be hand carved, we would go in, cut the music track, stretch one part of it, add a cross dissolve on the audio, and hope that it worked, play it back a few times, and it took a little while. Well, Blackmagic Design has added the AI Music Editor to our edit page here, and it basically does all that for us. Let's take a look at that. So here we've got my music track, and it's not long enough. So I can come into my inspector, click inspector if you don't see it, there it is. And we scroll down, AI Music Editor. There's a target length and a live trim, and it gives you different versions. So let's take a look at this. We'll double click on our target length and we'll enter one colon zero zero colon zero zero. And that gives us a one minute length. And now it's shortened it up. And if I click near that little squiggly line and zoom in, you can see that DaVinci Resolve has added this little squiggly line. So it's doing some modifications to the track. Control Z to undo. So what if I want it longer, right? Well, with our music track still selected, we can double click on target length, select everything there and type in say four minutes, press enter or click adjust. And you'll see that we've got a squiggly line here and that's where it's doing the join. And so it, it's, it, it's lengthened this to three minutes, 55 seconds and 15 frames. If I click on different versions, it's gonna give us different versions to play with to see what fits us best. And well, version four was empty, right? Oh, there it is. It filled it in. So with version one selected, I can then click here and control B to break and then backspace out the rest of it. And it keeps that edit right there in the middle. So we've got their edited version and that only took a few seconds. Pretty nifty. But if you go back in and make changes, that's where the live adjust might help. Let's take a look at that now. So I'm gonna click on our music track, hit the uh, reset button, and then I'm gonna click on live trim. Now I can drag it shorter if I need it, and you'll see that it kept the beginning and the end, and it basically cut out early here. But if I stretch it back out to however long my clip is, it gets pretty close, and then I can just click on the track, Control B to break, and backspace out the end there. Because I usually end my videos with a hard, like, thum, you know, explosion noise, I don't know. It, it's something I've done for years. It, it works for my style. But now we've got that same break towards the beginning, not in the same spot, but a different one, and it's been adjusted. And then if I mute our off bike track and our voice track, we can play right around this section right here where it's doing the change. So let's play that now. That sounded seamless to me. How about you? Leave me a comment below. Is this pretty nifty or what? Anyway, that's all I got for you today. We've got two really cool, helpful AI audio features in DaVinci Resolve 20. I hope you liked this little demonstration of them. If you did, boop the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Ask your questions below. I'm giving you lots to do here, including watching this video, which is my AI audio assistant tutorial. Until next time, I hope you're having a great day. John out.